Hi again and welcome to part 6 of the horror series. In this part we're going to add some sounds, ambient noises and music. Because the game is a bit boring now and not so scary. We really need that creepy ambience here. So no scripting in this episode. Let's get into the music. So to begin with, I added some footsteps to our player, so when he moves, you can hear him walk on the floor. And if you don't know how I made it, you can watch the tutorial, it's over on the right side now. And the link to the script will also be in the description, so you can download it. To apply these footsteps, we just drag the footstep script from the download link onto the first person controller. Add an audio source. Uncheck play and awake and drag the footstep into the audio clip. Now when you move the player, you can hear the sounds. Now for the ambient sound effects, we're going to make a new empty game object. So go to create, create empty, and reset its transform. Change the name to ambient sound, and add an audio source in it. Then if you download this project file from the description, you can see I added a audio clip, the horror ambience inside. Drag this one over to your audio clip. Make sure play on awake is checked and click loop. Then bring the volume down to say around 0.45. You can close the 3D sound settings because here you can see it's a 2D sound. So the position doesn't really matter. This ambient sound will be our general sound effect for the inside part. In the outside part we don't have any sounds so we're going to add that. So go to the scenes and open up the outside. Always remember to save this scene first. And again it's very dark in here so I'm going to enable this directional light. If you don't have it just add it. And the first thing we're going to do is also create an empty game object. And this one you have to position at the lake. So somewhere in the middle of the lake should be fine. Then also add a audio source here. Make sure play on the wake is checked and click loop. Then bring the volume down to around 0.5. And change the name to ambient lake. Now for the audio clip, drag the lake sounds into the audio clip. You can see that it says this is a 3D sound, so here the position does matter. And because of this we're going to change the 3D sound settings. And we need to change this curve so we can hear it from a further distance. And we drag our first puzzle controller somewhere around here. Then go back to the audio source. I spelled it wrong I see. And now you can see this red line, this is a listener, or our player. And at this position, we want to be able to hear the sounds from the lake coming up. So, delete all these keys. And then rotate this handle. Then we move this slightly forward, something around here. And then you can see this blue line over here. Drag this slightly up. Say around 0 0.15. And this blue line you can see over here it's a spread. This makes sure that the sound is not coming from one point but a bit distorted. Then we duplicate this one. And change this name to ambient noise. And at the audio clip drag the ambient horror into it. You can leave these settings as they are, because you can also see this is a 2D sound, so the position doesn't really matter. So close this one, and the volume 0 0.5 will be fine also. Then we go to our house, and here create a new empty game object, and position it at the door. So something right here. Okay, and also add a sound source here, or audio source, 
and click loop also. For the audio clip, we use one in the audio folder and it will be this one, wine chimps or something like that. So we drag that into the so we drag that into the audio clip. Then let's change his name to ambient house. And this is a 3D sound source, so we change the settings also. Delete these. Rotate this handle a bit. And this one we need to say around 50 over here. So now that's done, remember to place your player back to the beginning of the game. And make sure it's above the ground so it will not fall through. And also at the outside we need to add the footsteps. So we drag our footsteps script onto it and add the audio source. Uncheck play and awake. And for this one I imported a footstep with the grass sound. So we drag this one into the clip. This is also a 3D sound by the way. So we've now tested. Oh, uh, first disable the directional light. And let's test it out. And we got an error. It seemed like I didn't pay attention to this metal gate. So that gave an error. And to fix this we need to add a line in the interact script. We do that between those two if statements. And we write if door script with a small letter dot name is equal to let's have a look the hinge <laughs> then we need to do this door script changer so copy and paste it here and after we've done that return So get out of this if statement. And now everything works fine. So this will work for the outside part now. And let's get back to the inside. So save the scene. And go to the inside. And it's way offset again. So we need to go back to it. Okay. We don't have any sound for picking up the keys, so we're also going to do that now. In the interact script, here when we get the key, we say audio source with a big capital, so this one, dot play clip at point, and between the brackets we say hit dot collider dot transform dot position so it will play a clip at the position of the key we just hit and before this we need to say a clip so we need to make that we make a new public variable so this will be public audio clip and call it something like key pickup Then we copy this and we paste it in here. So we first say the audio clip we want to play and then position. For this we don't have to add the audio source at this game object because it instantiates a new one for us. The only thing we need to do is assign this variable. So go back to the inspector. Add the main camera. And here we can see our key pickup. And for this I imported a new audio clip, the key pickup. So we drag that into it. And if we now pick up a key, we should be able to hear a sound. Yes, we need, we got it. So that's great, it's starting to take shape now, but we're far from finished. We still need to do the main menu and some other stuff, especially some new scare events. But that will be for later episodes. As always, if you got any questions or suggestions, please leave a comment below this video. All the links including this project file will be in the description. 
I want to thank all the people who followed this tutorial series from part 1. Only the people who like to learn will be good in making games. So don't be afraid to ask questions because I really like to help you guys. Thanks for watching, please click thumbs up for this video and I'll see you in the next part. Bye guys!